Nahum chapter 1. The burden of Nineveh. And that is the subject of Nahum. And you remember another book about Nineveh? Jonah. The burden of Nineveh. This is what God has to say about Nineveh. And his judgment, his anger, burden. The book of the vision of Nahum that echoes you. So what Nahum had was a vision. Explain a vision. I have no idea. I'm not even going to try. I wasn't there. I don't get visions. I have the word of God. God is jealous. And we read that in the law. God hates when somebody else gets to worship. And he don't get it. Because there's only one other you can worship. Well, I'll take that back. There's two you can worship. You can worship Satan or you can worship yourself. And it's not God. The Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth. Ooh, gotta say it twice. Must be important. And it's furious. You mean the God of love? You tell me that that petty God that's preached on Sunday morning writes this about Nineveh? Where's the cinnamon and spices? Where's the sugar? The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. And he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. And I know some people stopped right there, but it says, saith the Lord. So if God hates the sin and loves the sinner why do we read revengeance and vengeance wrath why do you read that why can't god take stealing we've all stole something paper clip uh, staple we all have stolen something. So why can't God take that stealing and throw that into hell and give us all eternal life? Because you can have stealing. It's like having a gun. You can have a gun right here. I know somebody, oh, you're going to use that as an illustration. All right, you, can have, you have a hypodermic needle. That hypodermic needle is going to do you nothing. It ain't going to do you no good. and ain't going to do you no justice. The hypodermic needle could be filled with an illegal drug. Or it can be filled with a legal drug to help you. But it ain't going to do you no good just sitting there. It's got to be applied by a human. So stealing. Alright, God will throw. God hates sin. So I will throw stealing into hell. What do you do with someone who's stolen? What do you do with someone who is the deed? You go into a before a judge. Your Honor, I was caught with this crime. All right, what's the judge do? Take that crime and throw it into jail or take the person that committed that crime and throw it into jail? Why is it you want a vile criminal who's done a vile act against a child, against a woman, against somebody? You want them to be put in jail. You want them to be locked up for all life. Yet, but when you do something that's stealing, you want God to show you mercy and grace. See, you put different degrees on sin. This sin is higher than that sin. The Bible says all have sinned. The Bible says, behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. The Lord is slow to anger. Well, wait a minute. He's going to destroy this city. That's a contradiction. God is so mean. He's going to have vengeance. He's furious. He's got wrath. The Lord is slow to anger. It is said. Remember when we studied Jonah? 
Jonah went in there with an attitude, preached to the people, and they all got right? Did God destroy that city? Absolutely not. And Jonah walked up to God and said, I knew you were merciful. I knew you were going to do that. I knew you were going to spare them. The Lord is slow to anger. Nahum is about, or what happens to Nineveh next, being destroyed is about 100 years after Jonah. Now, can you just see Jonah over 100 years old sitting in his little boat? It was going to happen. God had more grace and mercy than Jonah did. It's over 100 years before Nineveh. The Lord is slow to anger. He spared them at their repentance to Jonah's message. Is that the wicked, evil God? If Nineveh were to get right again, and they don't, but if they were to get right again, God would spare them again. But they don't. And great in power. How great is the power of God? Try to make a tree grow without no seed. Make fishies disappear in the ocean at, at your voice. Speak the universe into power. That's how powerful God is. He has the power to cast you into hell for all eternity. And yet he also has the power by the gospel to save you for all eternity. And will not at all acquit the sinner. Sin. It don't say sin, does it? It says the wicked. Where can you come up with something so stupid to say God hates the sin but loves the sinner after reading that? See, people who come up with those things don't read their Bible. They're cute little plaques that you can put on a wall and pay seven bucks to a nice little pretty picture. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord and they do everything else, but that's a cute little plaque. Beelzebub's in the house. And this Beelzebub. And in the get out of here. It's great in the message. There's a bug flying around. And in the storm. Oh my nice. that bug. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. He spoke to Job out of a whirlwind. Storm. Storms may be because of God. I'm not saying all storms are. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. How's that? That's how powerful. Our God controls the weather. Can you beat that power? Can you plan a picnic Saturday when all weather forecasts are saying it's going to rain and step out there on your own power, praying to yourself, rely on yourself, say it's not going to rain during this whole period of time? What a wonderful God that we have that those clouds, that's just dust to God. The clouds. Never mind the galaxies, they're coming up with these pictures. The dust are just under God's feet. He rebuketh the sea. He did that with the Red Sea. And they walked upon dry land. And maketh it dry. And dries up all the rivers. He did that for Joshua in the Jordan River. He did it for Elijah. He did it for Elijah. Basha languishes. And Carmel. And the flower of Lebanon languishes. When God's in his fury. When God's in his anger. Even nature, oh man, we're in trouble. The mountains quake at him. That's going to be at the second coming, the second advent. The hills melt. That's the second advent. The earth is burned in his presence. That's the second advent. This stupid Floyd. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. That's the second advent. So Nineveh is a type 
of all the nations when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. And Nineveh messed with Israel. I will curse them that curse thee. Who can stand before his ignorant nation? Who? Who can abide in abide means stay? Who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? Can you see? Uh, it's just it's funny. It came to my mind. I'm, can you see the Lord Jesus Christ coming up and some Roman Catholic Pope with with his crucifix? Back, back, back. <laughs> That's it. He's gone. Trying to cheat Jesus Christ as Dracula. When Jesus Christ mounts up, you better thank the Lord God upon Calvary in the empty tomb. You are on the rear of that horse. I mean, behind the horse. That's what I mean. Because unless you're a Jew in the arraignment, if you're in front of Jesus... Who's going to stop him? Only the ones that Jesus said helped the Jews. How's that? Remember I told you we talked about Joel, the, the saints going in on top of the wall tops, going in the houses like, like they did with Joshua, with Rahab? Maybe we'll do that with the nations that help the Jews. I don't know. That was a nice little little thing, the Lord. I can't prove it by the Bible. I mean, you can throw it in the garbage can if it's not right, but that's something to think about. But who's going to stop the angry Lord Jesus? That baby who's now a lion, who's going to stop him? I, I grew up in a weird age of uh, creature feature Saturday mornings on Channel 56. Godzilla. It was always amazing. These little Japanese, they have matchbox vehicle, well, matchbox size vehicle against this big monster. And he's breathing out fire. And he's destroyed. And these little tiny little cars are going to destroy this big monster. You ain't going to destroy the Lord Jesus Christ. His fury is poured out like fire. And what's Revelation say? The rocks are thrown down by him. Now, where do you think? Is there a rock that God cannot? You got it right there. That's why they asked that question. Why not? Is there a planet that God can't throw? Why do they use the word rock? The rocks are thrown down by him. The Bible says when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, they're going to take their idols. They're going to take take their images. They're going to cast them to the caves. They're going to cast them to their baths. They're going to cast them into the holes of the rocks. And Jesus is going to bury them. Like you do with a dead man. This is a good book so far. Only seven verses. The Lord is good. Whoa. Whoa. You know, what we just all read, he's good. Which side are you on? I've never had to pay the Lord for any comfort I've gotten from him. And his comfort never runs out. I've had in my time, I needed medical and stuff like that. I've gone to the doctors and no, you ain't got no insurance, can't help you, keep cash. I ain't got the cash, well, can't do nothing for you. No money, no service. I walked to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm just having a bad day today. I'm just, I'm a wicked sinner. I'm just violating all that, Lord. I'm just so sorry. I just, man, he comforts me. A stronghold in a day of trouble. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide in the fierce of his anger? His fury is poured up by fire, and the Lord is good, strong in a day of trouble. The only one that can sustain that is the ones that are behind the Lord Jesus Christ. See, God's already been good to me before he even died on the cross. We're looking at the second advent. Am I going to have to worry about the fierce wrath of the Lord Jesus Christ? Absolutely not. And he knoweth. Now look at this. Look at this. And he knoweth. Look at this. And he knoweth them that trust in 
him. That goes for me. That goes for the Jews at the end of tribulation. God knows who you are. There are people right now on the other side of this planet, wherever it is, whatever country is on the other side of Florida, Daytona Beach, they have no, they may have no idea who I am. 99.99 people over there do not know who I am. Maybe 1.1 1 .1 who listen to my videos or audio. They don't know who I am. But I have the great God in heaven that sits in the heaven of Bolding of creator of all the things, everything that there is to be has created all things and knows me. You know, you could you could go sit on the moon right now and look at the earth and you won't be able to find me. But God knows where I am. And God knows I trust in him. You know, when God wiped out the entire world with a flood, he knew who, who trusted in him. And he says, Noah, you're just. Now build yourself an ark. You imagine somebody else God spoke to wasn't just. Who they learned, build yourself an ark. <laughs> yeah, right. He knew Noah trusted him. But with an overflow, overrunning flood, that's the first Noah. He will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemy. He's going to destroy Nineveh. He will destroy this world totally. He will destroy the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be thrown into utter darkness or gnashing and gripe in the teeth. What do you imagine against the Lord? Psalms chapter 2. I think he's a wonderful sugar sugar daddy. I think he's a bubble gum machine. I just put my 25 cents in and I get the bubble gum I want. I even get the color I want. He will make an utter end. So you think Mother Earth is going to, no, sorry. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. Sin is not going to get up when Jesus Christ gets total victory. So there'll be, like Nineveh, there'll be no America in glory. There's only one nation under God. It's not America. You have stolen you have stolen that title from Israel. Now give it back and repent of your sins. For while they be folded together as thorns, what do you do with thorns? You gather them up. What do you do with that? You burn them. Uh oh. The harvest, when the angels come in, thrushing that sickle. Thorns. That's the curse of the earth, thanks to Adam. Thorns. While they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble, fully dry. Malachi 4.1. When it's dry, it just burns even easier. And they're so drunk, they don't even know. They're so awkward, they don't even know they fall. There is one come out of thee that imagines evil against the Lord a wicked counselor there's the Antichrist it's also Sennacherib historically but future that's the Antichrist thus saith the Lord this is what God said no God says it let's pay attention though they be quiet And likewise many, yet this shall they be cut down when he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. Silence. Isaiah 36 and 37. 37, 36. 
Shh. Don't say anything. Don't mention the Lord is here. Quiet. He won't find us if he won't say nothing. For now will I break his yoke, that's the Antichrist, from off thee. The Jews. And will burst thy bonds in sunder. So the Antichrist is going to put a yoke and bonds in prison. Put them to service. And the Lord has given a commandment concerning thee, the Jew, that no more of thy name be sown out of the house of thy gods. Will I cut off the graven image and the molten image? Don't you get that God is against Again, the images and the, and the idols. And this is fulfilled in the murder of Sennacherib. Isaiah 37, 30, 37, 37, and 38. And the molten image I will make thy grave, for thou art vile. And that speaks for Sennacherib, and that speaks for the Antichrist. God's going to get rid of that, that image that he makes. God will destroy it. Whatever happened to Nebuchadnezzar's image that he made? Everyone fall down to me. You never did hear of it. It's not there. You can't go to that. Let's go take a pilgrimage to Nebuchadnezzar's image. It's not there. It's gone. It's forgotten unless you read your Bible. Whereas the image of Nebuchadnezzar is gone. It's forgotten. One day in glory, Vatican, Washington Monument, Lincoln Memorial, Taj Mahal, the Dome of the Rock, all these images, all these idols, all these, these things that man, it's going to be no more. It won't even be a memory. It won't even be something thought of. Behold, watch this, watch this. This is great. Behold upon the mountain the feet of him. And this is quoted in Romans 10, 15, when you're talking about someone's soul. We've been talking about the Antichrist. We've been talking about the tribulation period. We have been talking about God getting victory over the enemies, enemies of God. Behold upon the mountain. The feet of him that bringeth good tidings. Good tidings means gospel. Gospel means good tidings. Matter of fact, let's, I'll, you stay here. Let me go run over Romans 10. And let me read 15 for you. Let me show you what the Bible says about the Bible. Romans 10, 15. Stay where you are. Now watch. Uh, 15. And how shall they preach, except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And to make sure you didn't get it, and bring glad tidings of good things. Paul, you changed the word of God. You changed good tidings to gospel. You bad boy, you. No, Paul just told you what the definition is. Good tidings means gospel. And publish peace. Peace is God. Peace is Jesus Christ. Peace is the, the fruit of the Spirit. These will probably be the 144,000 walking about. Old Judah. Paul didn't quote that. Keep thy solemn feasts. After the downfall of the Antichrist, Judah, keep your solemn feasts. The law and the feast are coming back. Perform thy vows. That would be the offerings. For the wicked. One particular. 2 Thessalonians chapter 4. Shall no more pass through thee, Judah. He, the wicked, is 
utterly cut off. Satan just totally loses all. How's that? That's just the first chapter. A lot in there. God is great. God is victorious. God hates sin and the person that does the sin. 